Hey guys, it's me, the Trimmin himself, and I am a back for another video. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to detect arrows and how to um, also just detect durability and more, just more detection things. The usual on the channel. Anyway, so let's begin. So I'll be showing you guys how to do this through the use of an archery game. So that I came up with. So as you can see, some of these will turn to green, then eventually they'll become red, and orange will give you two points, while red ones will give you, I'm sorry, uh, three points, and then the green ones will only give you one point. So yeah, so the longer you wait, the more points you earn. It's a very simple game, it's very fun too. So, and eventually the game just gets faster and faster and faster. And as you can see, it is giving me the points and my bow is at full durability the whole time, which is interesting, which is just a plus of using this form of detection of durability. So yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I got 33 points so far. I can just shoot a few green ones because I need more points. Oh, missed that one. So I'm going to do a time lapse starting now. Okay, so we're back, and um, yeah, that was the whole game. So it was a very, it's a very um, simple concept for the game, though the commands do seem a bit complicated. Uh, that's just to make the game more like this is for the different rounds and the randomization of armor stands that will go ahead and fill the wooden planks with um, concrete. And so yeah, there's just armor stands. Um, below each one. It's a really simple concept though. It doesn't seem like it, but it trust me. It's not that complicated um, so Lies, okay, anyway <laughs> So we're gonna go over how the arrow works and how the bow durability works as well So we're gonna detect how this basically this is the whole Game right here on how it functions. This is just for the randomization of armor stands. So yeah, and um, let's go over it. So this will execute at all entities that are an arrow to go ahead and add to their ID scoreboard zero. Um, let's just take into account that the player has an ID as well. So I'm gonna quickly go over how this ID works and then I'll go over how the arrow ID works. So what happens here is it makes sure that all players will always have an ID of zero no matter what. And then what will happen is if the player has an ID of zero, then it will add to um, a filler entity. This is basically a fake player um, to, to their ID scoreboard one. Then what will happen is it will execute so that all player, well, all players with the ID of zero's ID will equal this filler entity's ID. So yeah, it's the filler entity is kind of a hard concept to explain. But it's, it's better than using like at E bracket type equals armor stand, you know, and then like the name of the armor stand or whatever. It's better than using that. You can just type in letters and it'll account for like an actual entity. And so this is the similar concept here with the arrow. Um, so what will happen is it will make sure that the arrow will always have a TT scoreboard of zero. It will also make sure that the person, well, the player will, uh, will get removed from the tag HB. HB stands for has bow. So this comes into play here in a second. So what happens here is we make sure that the player, oh, we're using the new filter has item and we're checking if the player has a bow and if it's in their hand and it will give them the tag HB. This is removing it so that like if the player doesn't have the tag, it, uh, once this command takes again, well, it doesn't have the bow, then it will remove their, ta uh, their tag. So this will also clear all players from a bow that has taken one durability damage. 
And if so, then we're also gonna remove the Hasbo one tag from them. And then we're gonna add it Hasbo one if they have the bow. So the, so basically what it's checking is if they have the bow originally, then when the, the thing gets cleared, it's checking if this tag is still applied, then it will add another tag if they still have the bow. But if they don't have the bow, what will happen is it will um, it will execute the rest of this command. So what's going to happen next is it's going to execute at all players who have the Hasbo tag, the first Hasbo tag, and not the second one. Meaning they do they had a bow, but then they shot it and they no longer have one. And so eventually they get given a new one. So, but we're going to continue. So now the arrow, which has the TT scoreboard of zero and only one arrow and the radius of three of the player, um, their TT scoreboard will now equal the player's ID. So, and um, what's going to happen now is it's going to give the player an arrows in their slot right here. That's kind of what, what happens next. And it will lock in slots so that no one can move the arrows or remove them. Next, what's going to happen is it's going to give the player a bow, again, if they have the first tag and not the second tag. And so then after that, it's going to detect from the arrow all angles around it um, for, well, from the, the so basically I'm trying to detect on all of the angles of the arrow if there is a concrete block five. Concrete five is the lime concrete variant and um, if the arrow does detect it on all of and, and on any of its angles, what's going to happen is it's going to set its points to one. So yes, the arrow's points, not the players, because that would mess up the system. So as you can see, I have a different angle um, or different like coordinate each time. Same concept. This just keeps going. So as you can see, yeah, and it just make sure it gives them five points. This is for the. Um, orange concrete because concrete one is orange as you can see it will give them two points we can skip four command blocks because all it is is just angles and now we're on concrete 14 concrete 14 is red concrete and we give the uh, the arrow three points so next what happens is um, we have we give the arrow a scoreboard of Oh, on the scoreboard D to make sure they always have a score of zero. What happens next is that we detect on all sides of the arrow if there is air. If there is no air, then it won't add one point for that angle. So if the arrow has any blocks on its faces, then it'll have a score from zero to five. But if it has no blocks on any of its faces and just has air on its faces, then it'll have a score of six. And so what will happen is when um, it's done detecting all of that, what's going to happen is it's going to, so any air, well, arrow that has a, um, has a block on one of its faces and only one arrow at a time, because if I made it all arrows at the same time, then this would mess up the whole system really badly. So what would happen is it's going to, execute off of that arrow that has a block on one of its faces and it's going to execute all players so their temporary id t1 stands for temporary id would equal their own id and if that happens well when that happens it will subtract their temporary id by the arrows id scoreboard so what this does is it will root rule out all players that don't have the same score as the arrow that means, so basically it would subtract everyone's score by that same number, and if their score equals zero, then that means that they were the one who shot the arrow in the first place. So, now what's going to happen is it's going to execute on all arrows that have, um, well, this is only one arrow, really, but we're using at E, so we can detect off of all entities. And we're going to check, um, you know, again, if it has a block on one of its faces and if it has points now, because the points have already been accumulated this whole time by, you know, hitting concrete, the concrete. And um, 
So what's going to happen is it's going to execute all players whose temporary ID is zero, which means that their ID is the same as the arrows. And it will add to their points the arrows points that it has accumulated. Then after that, what's going to happen is it's going to play a sound at that player. If the arrow has accumulated points, that means if the player hit the concrete. So if they didn't hit the concrete, nothing will play. And what will happen is it will execute all arrows. Uh, well, again, that one arrow, because we're doing one arrow at a time, uh, that has a block one of spaces and points that it ha has accumulated at the Y level of neg negative 62. This is executing off of the armor stance so that they will stop their cycling between the blocks and so that they will get their tag removed. And so what happens is that the arrow that is touching a block space, but only one arrow at a time, will die. So the arrow that this whole system has executed off of will die. So basically this system does 20 arrows per second because it goes it's going off of ticks. There's 20 ticks in a second. So yeah, it can do 20 arrows in a second. And it will reset all players' temporary IDs. Meaning that that's kind of how the arrow detects stuff. So yeah, that's basically the whole video. I don't really have anything else to explain. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.